All right, welcome back. This is another one of the medical school application videos where I run through the application process to pretty much every single graduate entry medical program in the country. I'll be applying to every single one this year for 2023 entry next year. Um, as you all know, I applied only to Unimail last year because I didn't have all my work sorted out. And that meant that despite my GAMSAT score, I didn't get an interview offer. So this time around, I've got the flexibility, I've got everything sorted and ready to go. It means I'm applying all around the country. And what I wanted to do was share all the research that I did into the process of every single one because I really didn't know anything about it. And as I've gone through this, I've learned I really, really didn't know anything about it. I wanted to share everything that I learned about that process with you all to hopefully clear up some of the confusions because every school, as we've learned, does things a little bit differently. Today's one's a little bit different. It should be a little bit shorter and a little bit smaller, just like the state that it's actually from. Tasmania has University of Tasmania and they've, up until now, always had only an undergraduate pathway into medicine straight for high school leavers or year 12 leavers. They have now in their MBBS program opened up a graduate entry pathway into the same MBBS program. So they're not offering a full doctor of medicine, but they are offering a graduate entry pathway into their undergraduate medical degree. And it's only just starting for 2023 entry. I don't really know why they've done this. It's probably just an influx of demand maybe, or maybe they're looking at moving towards a doctor of medicine program and they're working on bringing in some older uh, students into their cohort. I have no idea why, but it works for us. It's another opportunity yet again. Thank you to the person who commented and asked for me to actually do this video because otherwise I would have had no idea that this was happening in the background. And truthfully, when I researched it, it took a little bit to actually find it. I almost thought that it wasn't even a real thing. Eventually came across some of the information. It looks like some of it is still being released and still being worked out as we go but we'll learn more as the year goes on and I'll keep everyone updated. So it used to always be for high school leavers. They've now opened up this graduate entry pathway. They basically look to be borrowing a lot of what GEMSAS schools do, although they're not actually gonna be part of the GEMSAS process. So they're still gonna be a non-GEMSAS school. Kind of makes sense given that it's an MBBS anyway, but they are borrowing some of the requirements if you're coming in having already graduated from an undergraduate degree. So the first one is that you need to have graduated from at least a bachelor's degree level uh, degree. So that is an AQF level seven or above, and it needs to have come from an Australian provider. It can't have come from an international provider. That is a very, very strict rule. If you do have an AQF level seven equivalent from an international provider, in order to remain eligible, you actually need to have held AHPRA registration for the last five years up to application or you can also have registration with the Australian Veterinary Agency as well. So effectively what this is telling us is that University of Tasmania are either prioritizing Australian applicants, or if not, they're prioritizing people who are already in the healthcare field in Australia or accessory to it, the veterinary field in Australia as well. The next thing then is GPA. Uh, their minimum GPA, believe it or not, is an unweighted 6.5. So it's very, very different. So what, what it looks like is they'll probably have a pretty small intake. They're probably gonna have a pretty strict requirement for people coming in from the graduate entry pathway. And this is probably to prevent year 12 leavers from missing out on spots. So they've got a really high unweighted GPA requirement that is counted as a hurdle. And then they also need a minimum 50 in all three sections of the GAMSAT as well. So you do still need to sit the GAMSAT to apply. They don't have a minimum overall score hurdle, but obviously if you need a minimum of 50 in all three sections, that implies a minimum of 50 overall score as well. That doesn't mean that, that it would be competitive. I would imagine that GAMSAT scores are gonna be quite high for this as well, if they're expecting their GPA needing to be quite high. So um, it should be a pretty competitive cohort and probably a pretty small intake. Then in terms of being ranked for an offer, they scrap interviews altogether. They rank you on your combo score, 50% GPA, 50% GAMSAT score. So in terms of the steps of what they actually say you need to do. So step number one is register for the GAMSAT. They still use the two years uh, kind of uh, currency of your GAMSAT results. So if you're applying for 2023 intake, then you can use March of 2022 results. You can also use either of the 2021 results and you could also use September 2020. That is the oldest of the GAMSAT results that would be eligible for the 2023 intake round. The next thing is because they're not part of GEMSAS, you would make your application direct to the University of Tasmania and they haven't yet revealed what the dates for that application cycle will be, but I would imagine they're probably gonna go somewhere around uh, the GEMSAS one. They might do a month before, they might do a month after as well because they have a much more streamlined process. 
meaning they don't have to expedite it and do it super early because they don't have an interview process or anything like that. So keep in mind that they also have uh, a preferred pathway for graduates of their own, so graduates of University of Tasmania who have done medical research degree as well. So already they're starting to sub quota a little bit, kind of like how Flinders do things. If you are in that cohort of graduates, then basically to be eligible, you need to have completed that degree by the end of the application year. And then you also need to have no failures in any of the subjects. And you also need to have no credit from prior study or anything like that contributing to it. And if you're in that cohort, that would mean then you're just ranked based on your percentage score across your entire degree and you don't need to sit uh, a GAMSAT and they don't care about GPA. You just get ranked based on your percentage, kind of like a WAM, but not actually weighted. And then, so I'll just mention some other differences uh, is one of them is that they don't do interviews, just like you said, um, they're not a GAMSAT school, so they're not going through an interview process just based purely on scores. They also sub quota for Tasmanian applicants. So if you're a Tasmanian resident, it looks like you'll have sub quoted places, which increases your likelihood makes it a little bit more competitive for people who are willing to maybe travel um, there and study there instead. And they also have sub quotas for rural applicants. So I would imagine that small intake, it's probably gonna be chopped up very similar to the way Flinders do it, where even if there's a certain amount of spots, it might cut down to maybe 10, 15, max 20 places or something for a particular sub quota, which explains why their minimums are so high and why competitive scores are probably gonna be quite high as well, um, because it'll be lots of people competing for very, very few places effectively a game of medical school musical chairs and so it's it's not going to be like a shoe in process just because it's new they'll probably have a pretty strict process as well other than that um, they still say there's more info to come they still seem to be putting it together it seems a little bit last minute in my mind but uh, i'm excited to see what else they do and realistically i'll probably put an application in to be honest because tasmania seems kind of cool a little bit cold but uh, i want to increase my chances and if i'm willing to travel to sydney then i'm willing to travel to perth but I'm also willing to travel to Tasmania as well. Um, seems pretty cool. I've always wanted to go there anyway to do like a mountain biking trip and stuff, so, and a, and a motorbike trip, so I might not sell my motorbike anymore and keep that, take it with me. That would be pretty cool because I got some nice driving roads. Anyway, hopefully that's um, kind of opened your eyes to maybe a new opportunity in your application process as well. I'd recommend researching it and having a look, even though there's not a huge amount of information out there right now. Um, I'll link below the University of Tasmania website. You can check it out for yourself and uh, let me know in the comments whether or not you're going to think about applying to it. All right, cool. I'll leave that one there and I will see you guys in the next video.